Satsang 75. Narayan plays in all forms. 9th October 1935. Everything is life energy and nothing but life energy. When the life energy as pure consciousness expresses itself, it becomes wind, Vayu. We say salutations to the wind god or salutations to the fire god or water god or salutations to the earth god. When life energy expresses itself, we give it many names. That which is the outcome of something is essentially of the nature of that thing. That which is manifestation of life energy is only life energy. Wife and children are all only the life energy. But it is conceptual, and therefore it is called maya, illusion. It is also called the individual, or jiva. This means that all of this illusion is false. Within that falsity, there is some good and some bad. People even say that a golden ornament is good or bad. This habit of calling things as good or bad becomes applicable even to the life energy. The life energy, which is called by various names, such as daughter, wife, maternal aunt, great grandmother. But what is all of this? Only one thing called by many names. God takes many forms, and the one who knows this fact is called a sadak, a spiritual aspirant. Golden images of God Kandoba and a golden image of a pig are equal when the gold is considered, as their price per gram is the same. The price is related to the basic metal, and the value is given to the basic metal. The real worth is related to the original thing, its essence. And that thing or essence is made to assume various forms, and the whole game is going on. It is a fun. It is an amusement. It is a play of imagination indulged in in idle time. It is playful attitude, an idea of fun. There is no consideration whether there is profit or loss, good or undesirable. It is just merriment of consciousness. There is no need to feel sorry or happy about it. It is just a joyful mood of consciousness. However, one who takes this seriously as true falls into an ocean of sorrows. The things and the numbers are symbolic, emotional concepts. Any particular thing, person, or scene has no reality, 
but the one who takes it to be real is a fool. This ignorant madness is destroyed by being in the company of saints and sages. Then one fully enjoys Brahman as absolute pure consciousness. What does this mean? It means that one remains in the state that is at the base of all experience, yet is without change. The goldsmith was interested in the price of gold. He was not interested whether the image etched in the gold was of a god or a pig. This is the point of view of the wise man. Illusion means the changing of the form of things. One who sees the singular consciousness in every being is a saint. When a thing that appears is taken as true or real, that is illusion. The thinking that we are our body, it is my own being, and I am as I appear bodily, is our illusion. That is Maya. The usefulness of my body, the salient features of my body, and the concept that this body is useful to me is illusion. The concept that says, in the future I am going to be benefited by this body, and for that future I am going to do hard work, and I want to enjoy all the pleasures And the one who does everything with this idea is entangled in maya, the illusion of the body as being true. All of this illusion has arisen from our body identification. In the ancient stories, Lord Krishna said to his devotees, Do not take anything new. The old things that you have are true. Here old means that which is the first or original thing or essence, which is the one abiding in all. That is Brahman. Stay with that. Illusion can tell people to take new clothes and new ornaments and surrender their old clothes and old ornaments. People take beautiful new clothes and ornaments with greediness and give illusion all their old clothes and ornaments. Afterwards, it so happens that miraculously those who took new things suffered in various ways. Their hands and feet became painfully constricted. Many became mad and many lost their memory. In some cases, the clothes around their bodies became invisible and they became naked. Head dressings disappeared Some lost their upper garments. Half the ornaments disappeared. And some, being naked, began to hide themselves and run here and there seeking cover. Thus all those people were shamed by believing in illusion. When those people were exchanging their clothes for new ones, Lord Krishna was giving a warning. 
He said, the people should not accept the new clothes that are all the jugglery of Maya. Krishna warned them that they should not give away their own true thing, Atman, and that illusion was deceiving them, putting an evil spell over them. However, the people did not listen to Krishna's advice and were thus lost in Maya. Really, the oldest thing, the primordial essence, is our own being, which is the self, prior to any new experience. That is the real gold that should not be given up. Either old or new, everything is no doubt only the life energy. But do not be deceived by the new because of its newness. That which is formed is perishable. Lord Shiva told the demon Basmasura, to bring to him some ashes daily. The meaning of this is that Shiva likes everything when it is burnt and turned into sacred life energy. The entire world that is seen goes into the great God, Shiva, in the end. Now modern science believes that air is the origin of all life. They have not searched beyond that. Yet there is Brahman beyond, but science cannot approach further through chemistry. When two come together, some third thing is formed. When a carpenter and the wood come together, a chair is made. The creative power that the demons practice is called Wudumbari, and the power of God to create this world is called the creative power. One who defeats and drops all concepts is called a knower of Brahman. All of the power to construct or create new things is in a way the power of mesmerism. It is an art to create delusion before people's eyes. The one who takes these created forms as real and permanent is a fool and bound to be born and to die again and again. One who does not get enchanted by creation is just like Almighty God. One who knows the three processes of creation, preservation, and dissolution goes beyond them and sits on the throne of Param Atman, the Supreme Self. Bhava means an ocean which has been created, and you are fish in that ocean. By avoiding the bait, you must go beyond the ocean. If the fish thinks that he is ocean, then he is ocean. He is made of water. One who knows that everything that is seen has come into existence from Param Atman is free of this illusion. To know and to understand this is right knowledge. When King Janaka understood this right knowledge, he was joyful. When one meets a wise man, one must ask him the right questions. 
and realize the truth himself. Then that one is a wise one because he gets his own welfare through reflection and inquiry. King Janaka asked, Please explain to me what is Brahman? Who is called Brahman? Vasudeva, Param Atman, Narayan. That from which all this has been created is called Brahman. The word Padartha in Sanskrit has a special meaning. Pada means term or word, and artha means the significance of the term. All of these that Janaka was asking about relate to Brahman. That is the artha, the meaning of the term. As there was not a single word giving us the meaning of the primordial thing, it was called Brahman. And man was content with this one word, Brahman, which completes whatever was intended to be told. Such terms as Krishna and Bhagavan and Vishnu are all names of this one essential thing. Now listen to the nature of this one essential thing. That which is completely filling everything in the universe as the base of all is called Narayan. The rishis, the great sages of your, who are well versed in the Vedas, called it Narayan. The sage Pipalayan says, O King, the primordial cause of this universe is Narayan. When he is non existent, the universe dissolves. And he who exists, moves, and is full of joy within the body is Narayan. He who creates the body and remains in it without being affected by it is Narayan. How was this world created? I will tell you. He who sleeps dreams, and sees things in the dream, and knows the world that is seen, is Narayan. As soon as Narayan became space, there he was awake, and the world came into existence. Whether it be for a short duration or for a prolonged time, Narayan is the experience of the waking state. That experience does not happen because it is wished for or because it is not wished for. It does not disappear because it is not wanted and it does not happen in any way depending on the desire of the experiencer. The world comes into being and disappears as a natural phenomenon. Know that the experiencer of all is Naraya. The one who says that the dream is false is Naraya. The one who says that the dream is fictitious, the one who knows the awareness in the waking state, and the one who is fully aware of the bliss of deep sleep is only Narayan, Atman, the Self, or Bhagavan. 
that which recognizes all states and all experiences is also called the Supreme Self, Param Atma. He is the highest brilliance of consciousness, the supreme formless beingness, and all pervading Naraya. Now listen to the easy way of realizing the state of Brahman. See that which is total, that which is whole. That param atman is in the Om sound, which is in you. That by whose power the mind and intellect work is the Supreme Self, and that is Narayan shining like a star within you. Narayan is the life in all beings, the mover of all beings. He is awake in deep sleep as well as in samadhi. He is called the Lord of the world, Jagadisha. He who sees this world is the Lord of the world, the primordial Lord. If Narayan did not exist, the vacant space in the nose would not be able to smell any fragrance. He by whose power you say, I am, is Narayan who protects us as God, the doer of all actions.